you know, that damage output will eventually come through. Will this be Sylvie lock up the Wukong? Oh. No, it's Trundle! Love me some trolling. Absolutely fantastic. I like this one a lot more though. I like just I like Trundle just in general. I feel like they have a lot of mid-game power. Just see whether they can execute. Let's jump onto the rift here for game number one. Uh, on one of his first backs once he picks up that gold for it. That'll be double support, and they'll just build money and try to scale. Uh, the player list that we saw there, again, mostly east side, uh, as a lot of teams have really relied on this Jax. I think practiced it a lot last year because it was so strong then. It is certainly weaker than it uh, was then now. Oh, Sylvie, get that pillar out. The flash forward, they're committing, and that's first blood to the troll. Got oh, slapped. I, just, I needed him to dance just a little bit. A little bit of that trundle dance. Took rest, he, uh, do some auto attacks, which would have been relatively good. Well, Sylvie does not have flash, but he's just going to lurk around and see if Bulldog pushes this. He's going to find Andil. Yeah, Andil going to move on in. Pillar of Filth down as there is the Paranoia. Okay, returning the favor. But Cuz now is underneath the turret, says, thank goodness they reworked the map because I can just walk over here. And he does so. This is a You're like, and now back to you, Wolf. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is just not what I was prepared for. I was not prepared for it, Wolf. I didn't really know how to follow up, just because like this is uncharted territory is what it feels like. Dundon is not necessarily known for his laning prowess. You know what, though? He's known for his jacks. Okay. Absolutely right. As Jiwoo, a fair bit of damage coming on through here. Thankfully, the snare is going to be available. Oh, I thought he was going to go a bit aggressive there. Speaking of which, in comes Sylvie. Pillar of Filth is down as Andil. He's so squishy, but there's the Encore. Bull's just going to keep him alive. And Dundun has... A uh, dude has gone all out. And Dundun trying to turn it, cuz doesn't... There is the Paranoia. Immediately it comes off cooldown. He breaks the Fear Tether. And you cannot kill Dundun just like that, cuz. Unless you hit him with a Duskbringer. Uh, okay, no, he's, uh, it wouldn't have been quite enough damage there. Good old but... reliable Atlas. You know, he's, he's, just, he's just gonna hunker down. He's gonna flash at the right timing. He's gonna get out of that fear. He's not afraid. He can't be feared. It's just one of the passives of Dinsen. Series as it is today. Oh, now we get his own personal view of yeah. this one as well. I'm glad that we get this. Because I think if this was an anime, this would be a whole episode. Oh, yeah. If it was DBZ style, oh yeah, that sidestep of the Cassante Q <laughs> is like two episodes <laughs> at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we like go back in time, and it's like him sitting with his family, talking about what he wants to achieve when he's older and stuff like that. Yeah. And anyway, what did Ox say? So Ox has already talked about the um, interaction with the Rylai's on Seraphine. Yeah. And I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. Yeah. Pillar comes down, gets chomped, and Bull has to flash. There is a celebratory uh, ultimate there as the paranoia comes in. Delivery of the Nocturne here as Dew will get feared this time around. And the Encore is beautiful, but the follow-up is not there. They don't have the vision. And Nongshim, they don't want to fight. No, 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 no. They are just going to back away. No turn involved. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. No flash, you see, you, no flash to spend these guys. Ultimate here, he can block this choke point. Well, Nongshim must have called him, okay? And he has to come. That's just how that one goes. As Paranoia comes in, Cuz just steals it, all right. That was really cute. This man is very, very good at taking dragons. <laughs> Sylvie and has pressed the subjugate button. They're grouped, too. I don't think they can stick to this turret, unfortunately, even with the cannon wave here. Now they're trying to rotate away as five. Bulldog still doesn't have his ult back up. If he did, they could definitely look to turn. Yeah, as Jiwu dashing forward. I don't know about that one. The snare comes in, but he's still alive. All right, never you mind. And Peter didn't even have his ultimate for that. Jiwu was still trying to dash in and make something happen. And the walk away. Uh, now we watch Cuz. In that, uh, that anime that just extends. <laughs> and Cuz is just like, let's get the hell out of here, by the way. Yeah. Um, we tick over 22 and a half minutes in this game. Let's see where the target for Cuz to deliver the ball is going to be as well. If you can get onto Ju or if you can take out Call Me, I mean, those are prior targets. Speaking of. All right, well, Ju just going to wander away. There's a culling, fair bit of damage. As the pillar is down, and look at this, Call Me. Getting some work done. In goes Cuz, looks for the backline, but Jiwoo's able to walk it off. And Dundun turns up with the Counter-Strike at the ready. Konong Freak's turning this into a siege opportunity, though, and Nongshim's still a little worse for wear. Yeah, kind of hard to believe, but Bulldog also still has ultimate. Uh, he didn't use it. And, well, now Senna doesn't have access to hers because Colmy used his. That's going to be a decent encore, though, and the Kasante has taken down the Azir. Lucian dead as well, not a lot of damage left. Here for Nongshim. And now has a frozen heart on top of everything. And yes, Jiwoo does some damage, but if he just immediately gets all outed, 
like this from Dudu, then it could be a problem. And uh, speaking of problems, there's some vision. Paranoia going to be used here towards this top side. I was waiting for a Nocturne to soar down, but instead, he's catching pigeons. Yeah, I mean, that was... And look at this Bulldog. Puts the ball on Cuz. And surprise, surprise, he's just pulled in. Pillar not going to do any favors here, unfortunately, and he is just isolated from the rest of his team. That's the Orianna Nocturne synergy. We have seen... Jiwoo is getting still... Like, he's still quite strong, and he actually went Serpent's Fang, which is a good tech here. Is, Okay, there's okay. another Paranoia as Emperor's Divide comes through. It's a great spell shield from Cuz. Dawning Shadow flies in. And Kwandong Freaks, they have got everyone here. Colmy going to be taken down. Andil collects that kill. And Bull still running after this one. Dissonance movement speed going to help out thanks to Bulldog. So they're getting a turret. They're getting a dragon. And Dundun calls to go bottom here very late. Yeah, and uh, Colmy is just going to stop Dudu from being able to go back. And now the rest of the team turning up. Okay, let's see whether Dudu will die. He does have a lot of options. There's also Dundun doing his Dundun things. All out available here. Finds a big part of the wall. And he's got Ghost. He's looking to run this one out. And Dudu, he's still running. Still running. Mega Cone, he's out of there. Easy peasy, don't you worry about that. So Nongshim <laughs> wastes a bit of time towards the top lane. But at least Dundun is able to take an inner turret. It's just not, but they're not going to be below health very often, I don't think, because uh, here we go. Well, Shockwave is not really going to do too much. It's a good Zhonya's from Colmy, but he still gets snared. There's the Encore as well, and Bull's a Sniper! And he's a Seraphine as well! And look at these heals. Immediately, it looks like they haven't even been in a fight as Kwandong Freaks look to head over towards the Baron Pit. And Colmy lying on the floor again. Four deaths for the man. Yeah, there's your Zonias. You know, I mean, it, it saved him, but the rest of the team wasn't going to be able to do anything anyways. As, oh boy. Yeah, Dudu is actually immortal. He finds two with the knockups. Peter can't go anywhere. And this game is just done. Look at him. He treats that culling like a back massage. He says, thank you so much. I'm going to take you Nexus. You know, when I was mentioning chances of victory around 34 minutes, uh, we did it! Oh, we yeah. got there! There you go! <laughs> we got there, Atlas! Damn it, we hit 34! Did you actually come from the future today, Wolf? I mean, I, I was feeling like Senna wasn't going to get there, so you could tell I'm not, but you know what? <laughs> Chemtech's soul is broken, apparently we found out today, but you know what? Nocturne it's Oriana. so broken, you don't even need it no. in order to win the game. No. As, all right, we've got a paranoia once again. Call me out of the death chamber and straight back in to their welcoming arms. Dindin, he's trying his very best to stop them, but they're mainly ignoring him. Finally, he will be taken down here by Bulldog and Kwandong Freaks. They are looking to try and match their best winning streak here in the LCK. And it may just happen if they keep playing like that. And it's also about late game insurance as well and having a balanced comp, like you're saying. And it's keep it simple, but also make sure that if you do go really late into the game, you're the team that naturally gets the advantage. With a Poppy Flex top into the Cassante, this is something that you know we didn't talk about, but when we saw the Poppy locked in, we know it was a possibility. Or is it Trundle top? That's the question. Trundle does also fit the bill of uh, stop opposition from get close to you. Yes. Um, that is a theory. And this time, you know, the space was talking about, oh, but like, where do they get their engage? You don't engage yeah. because we want to keep them on their toes. Let's jump on the rift here for game number two between Nongshim Red Force and Kwondo. <laughs> don't do it, Dudu. Oh, this is actually just so cute. Dun -dun, never change. Absolutely never change. When you consider um, you know, the Poppy is going to be a nice front line, the Trundle is going to be a really nice front line. It's very difficult to get on top of the Corky or punish him. Plus, he has Package, plus, he has Valkyrie, just in general. Like, killing this guy's hard. Cuz going in. He is. Does still have that pillar available as Peter gets a little bit caught on it as well. Good placement there from Cuz as the handshake comes in, and Sylvie. Oh no, he doesn't like how polite Kwandong freaks are being. Yeah, and that, uh, that ward got stabbed a lot to the point where it's not there anymore. Ridiculous. A handshake comes down here to... Oh, oh my oh god! Santa, goodbye! You will be missed! I don't know what happened to your health bar, but it's no longer there, and first blood goes to Bull. This is his Draven. Bull. He's very happy that he managed to pick it up, and that was a decent amount of stacks as well. You probably put this wanted guy, to go in and get some money. Crowd gave a quite significant cheer for that one. Now, this is an undo play, as much as we like to give Bull credit, but he follows up on it very quickly, flashes, knock up, ult comes through. Peter reacts as fast as he can with his own ultimate, but only so much he can do. And now Cuz does throw down the pillar. 
No flashes have been picked up yet from Nongshim, as Jiwoo able to offer some damage back without too much of a response. Still, big deal here for this stage of the game, as there's a hook, it is going to come through, Jiwoo. Is he going to be okay? Hostile takeover whirling. Death does so much work here as the dragon is forgotten. Cuz is going to remember it, picks that one up. That's going to be their next one. Hextech sold this game as Bull. Oh no! Is he going to get bailed out? The answer is no. It was so incredibly close as now Dundon has erupted onto the rift and it's Jiwoo that collects a double. And Dudu, he was in the top lane. That's my, that's my hope, Atlas. But that's my hope too. Still definitely favoring Quantum pretty massively, despite four kills going over, it remains 700 gold ahead. Well, there's an all out here from Dindin. Let's see whether that's actually going to help oh, him as, oh, Dawning Shadow coming in to try and help Dindin. The flash from Dudu, but he just bucklers him. And that's the solo kill, even with the center helping out. Hook is going to connect here as Peter goes in. Hostile takeover is decent as Cuz trying to get the bailout, but it does not work. Bull has the Whirling Axes and a full health bar, but he's just not able to get into this fight as Andil goes down. Call Me misses the ultimate, and Bulldog is too far away. Another split team fight without their top laner on the side of the Guangdong Freaks as the Flash comes forward. Logistics protocol not quite working. There's a stand aside onto Peter. Oh, I sweat. Yeah, I, I agree, Jonas Strong. There's got to be something. There's a hook forward here from Peter, but the package in response, the hostile takeover wombo combo is so good, and this time Peter is not getting out. That's what we're supposed to do. Once again, it is only four members of Kwandong Freaks. And then he can ride it into the, the inner turret there as well. Actually kind of cool. Uh, unless Dudu is going to stop that one from happening, and to be perfectly honest, uh, he is behind Sylvie. enemy lines. Sylvie is just going to get pulled back. And he's going to try to escape, but the last axe flies forward. 465, thank you very much. There hasn't been able to stack up too many more Adoration stacks, but that is still a fair bit of money. There are three people missing, Quandon. They figured it out. Well, Andil is going to walk his way in here. Hostile takeover available, finds a couple with it, and there is the kill for the Corky. Whirling death is to celebrate, but on the way back, it collects the Azir. Thank you so much for the leash as Sylvie's down for the double. In the meantime, Dudu is trying to do some Dudu things with Dindin. The Baron is gonna be secured. They already have a Baron. They have to contest this by hell or high water. They have to somehow, Nongshim. Need a steal, need something. Oh, this is GG. It might be GG anyway though, because it's so difficult still. Cuz getting taken down low has Subjugate though, and the Dawning Shadow is going to be able to take him down, and now there's no Smite in the pit. It is going to be stolen away and denied, but can they get out? Emperor's Divide says they don't want out, they just want to kill them as the Handshakes come in, and unfortunately I think there might be a little bit of a money difference as Bulldog, oh my goodness, he is so close to just killing him. That's a Hexgate from Dindin with about 100 health. It's a dangerous maneuver, but he went for it as they will interrupt Sylvie. That was optimistic Bulldog. as Bulldog. Oh my goodness, that is so scary. From both sides, they both have about zero health. Then one of these rockets has got to hit, surely. Oh, who is going to be able to take this? Bulldog. Dindin, can you make this one happen? Can you make the magic work? And Bulldog doesn't want to risk it. He knows how dangerous Dundun can be when he's cornered as Sylvie going for a back once again. This reminds me of that Nidalee game with Peanut where he ran around the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if they got Hextech Soul as well, my goodness. Handshake, Colmy is down extraordinarily low, does have to use the Emperor's Divide, but Bull, he runs quick, and that is a dead Azir. Almost a dead Draven as well. The audience goes, ooh, it's yeah. the same sound <laughs> yeah. here in the yeah, arena. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what Corky wants to feel like is, all right, Dudu going to be interrupted here. Is he brought out the big helicopter hammer. Everyone's committed to killing Poppy. He does have steadfast presence. We're seeing some value here as he's buying time. And guys, Dudu is very happy to die here. Because yes. So will the Baron. Baron goes down. And that's a lot of money across the team. Oh, but it denies Hextech Soul, right? You no, know, I don't get excited about that just yet. He's got a package. Trying 20 to seconds. Teleport his way in. Let's see. Dindin going to turn up. That is another, another one secured. Very cute. Package now going to be delivered. Call me. Uh, rocket number three is tanked. He has to shift some sands to get out. Whirling Death is going to follow him very late. And now Quanlong Freaks, uh, they're on a pretty good side of the map as far as killing the enemy Nexus is concerned. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's not great. Well, <laughs> he was thinking about an ultimate there. Subjugate does come through. He's Wait. pretty tanky, but not tanky enough. That's the kill. And now Dudu, 
It's his turn. All right, he does find an ultimate, splits up this fight a little bit. Wait a minute. We need to see a little bit more DPS. Where is this Corky? Where is that damage? And there's the Flash Emperor's Divide. They managed to find it. The Heroic Charge is massive though. Bull with another cash in. They didn't get the Draven. And Bulldog is also still, well, now they, they got, got the Draven. Draven. The Draven just ran into the four people. I'm not sure about that. that. And Bulldog is now in trouble. Sylvie is running forward. Oh my God, the Bounty Gold is still up. It's and now, still up. and now, Wait. Dongshim can go and get the neutral objective on the map. Dudu is, he looks immortal. Uh, Whirling Death almost just kills Call Me here as Pillar of Filth is down and now Kuz, it's his playground. Heroic Charge onto Peter. He's not the target you really want to be fighting here, but they just get rid of him. Call Me, oh my goodness, the damage as Bull is going to eviscerate him. Dundun running for the hills, and I have a feeling that Quantum Freaks may have earned their soul this time around. Or is it just going to be Bulldog sending them a package? And inside the package is a dead Nexus. <laughs> uh, not entirely sure. That could be it, though. The send a message, Atlas. Yes. All right, here we go. One turret down, one inhibitor down. Now moving over. There is that package that we were talking about. Bulldog uses it in order to taxi an ultimate a Wait. million miles away. Cuz getting taken down low. There's the dawning shadow. And perhaps it's the dawn of a comeback for Nongshim Red Force. Or they're all just going to party down here and look for the back door. Well, Colmy also is going to probably die because he's now running the wrong direction. Four bad guys down here, and that is Bull getting another cash in, one that he definitely does not need. Mm, a little bit concerned, Atlas. I'm, I'm concerned as well because we have to go back to the scaling cotton. Never mind, we may not have to go back to that as Jiu is going to take a fair bit of damage, but it's Peter that's on that front line. Hook is going to miss, and maybe he's happy about it as we're charging up the Keeper's Verdict. Dudu will cancel it. They have Hextech Soul, they've got slows, they should be able to chase them down here. You say that, but maybe this is. We need to have the scaling conversation because right now, Quandong Freaks winning with this beautiful scaled up late game composition. That means that this Elder will- Bull said he's doing Elder. Yeah, and he's he doing a lot of damage it. to it as well as, oh, goodbye. That's the Keeper's Verdict that's gonna work out here for Dudu and the Elder is just gonna be secured. This is a demoralizing victory for Nongshim, I feel like, or, or rather, defeat. Dendon's relatively tanky, so is Peter. And these rockets aren't necessarily landing. Dundon tanks, oh, okay, maybe he can't tank any of them. As Whirling Death comes in, Call Me has to go golden. The Nexus turrets are sort of looked at and they explode. Emperor's Divide comes down, but it is the killing fields here in the base of Nongshim. It's looking like the 2-0 and the 2-0 on the week for Kwandong Freaks. They were winning this entire game. It was not quick, but heck, they made it work, and it doesn't have to look good. It just has to be a win. And uh, I think that that makes, uh, makes a bit of sense. He didn't exactly have the, uh, I say he didn't exactly have the greatest of games, 61. Thank you very I much. This is Deer for the POG interview translation, joined by Kuz and Andal of Kwangdong Freaks. Congratulations. <laughs> Crowd is wild. Now, cuz, you got your first consecutive win in your first POG in your new uniform. How do you feel? I didn't think I would be here um, with Kwangdong Freaks, but I'm really happy that we're here with a victory. And Andal? Uh, with, uh, with Bull joining, um, we're able to break our losing streak, and I'm really glad that we're able to secure another victory. And in game one, because you picked Nocturne with Oriana, and your synergy was quite something. And it requires a perfect Ori Nocturne Wombo combo timing, and yours was on point. So, was there a different approach in the practice process at all? I, I, we saw potential in this comp, so we were able to practice and put in some time. I think Bulldog is pretty uh, proficient when it comes to playing Ori, so I think it was able to. We were able to build some synergy over time. And with the Senna Seraphine, um, there was a bit of concern because Nocturne by himself could have a bit of a different concept from the bot comp. So. But the overall comp looked really clean when you guys played it. So how would you describe the strength of this comp? I think Senna and Seraphine, they have really good sustain and survivability during the team fight. And I feel like uh, we were just trying to look for an angle to open up a team fight where we can land some Wombo combos. 
Game 1. It looked like it might have been a little rough with the enemy taking two drakes, but Cuz sniped the drake away, so let's take a look at that moment. How did you find the steel angle? So when we went to the drake, the health was pretty low, lower than what we thought, and we weren't really exactly positioned well, but we were able to team fight it through, and we, uh, I was able to secure that steal. And in game two, Andal, you took Draven and Renata right after the opponent blind picked Senna, and this comp has gone winless so far this season. So what made you guys come up with this pick? So Bull is quite confident when it comes to playing Callista and Draven. And in game, uh, in while we were in CL, we were able to play with each other for about five months. So I think it was just we were reliving those moments in CL, and we were able to do pretty well today. And yeah, your Renata was on point all game with the incredible engages. You use your flash aggressively to create some team. Fight angles, and there's a replay in the mid lane that we should take a look at right here. And your engage really stood out here. So, in this moment, I feel like when the moment we picked Nautilus, uh, we knew that we would win because. We can actually clean up afterwards. Uh, I think when when Nautilus came into us, I think we were able to confidently win the team fight. And it looks like you're quite experienced at playing Renata. I think it's because of Bull that I was able to practice more of Renata. So surely you're used to playing with uh, Bull in the CL days. How is your synergy with him right now? I feel like we're actually we have really good uh, and similar play styles. So in game we are actually pretty on point, and even without having to communicate uh, directly with him, I think we're actually we have we have this we're on the same wavelength, which which helps a lot. And uh, yeah, Ando has a lot of knowledge regarding the game, and he has a really good read when it comes to the game, so he's very helpful. And yeah, when hearing this, Ando, we would expect him to feel a little embarrassed or shy, but he seems so confident and so comfortable. And we were told that Ando's mother gave out some handmade bracelets to the fans to commemorate the team's first win. Did you guys get it? I saw it myself. It looks like it was made with so much love for her son. It looks like she's shaking her bracelet right there. Uh, any word for your mother to express your gratitude? Mom, you cheer for me <laughs> so much. And yeah, I've been very irritable whenever the game doesn't go well, but she will always take care of me no matter what. So I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, Mom. And Cuz, you are Guangdong's super veteran. What kind of a player do you want to be seen as to your younger teammates? So, my little brothers, my little teammates, uh, they have such good mechanics. I think I'm trying to come up with a way to utilize them and the best way that can show off their mechanics. So I'll continue to work hard for them. Now you guys have some strong teams to face next week. You'll play D plus Kia and Gen G back to back. So what is your resolution, Cuz? This week, uh, we were able to win against some strong teams, so I believe that we are definitely capable of winning next week. I hope that you guys uh, witness us. Uh, focus on our own plays, and we'll make sure that we win next week. And Andal? 
In the process of us practicing, I feel like as long as we were able to play on stage as we normally do, I believe that we will do well. So we'll make sure that we focus on our own plays and make sure we do well. And this will be the end of the interview with Cuz and Andal from Guangdong Freaks and back to the space. <laughs>